Hello and welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss around Veeam version 11. Veeam version 11 was announced last week and it does include a lot of new functionalities. I think it's more than 200 the PDF does it says and the PDF is like more than 20 pages. Uh, so you can just take a look on the, on the internet, just go to the Veeam.com and download that what's new in the case that you want to just uh, take a look at every single feature and what it, uh, what it can help your business. So, but on this video, we are going to discuss the business value, how we can apply some of these new features to our day-to-day -day, uh, operations. So I think we can start with a CDP, Continuous Data Protection. This is huge, it's one of the biggest, of course, features that uh, this release uh, includes. And what, uh, what is CDP and why, will, why, why do we need it really? So we have our production cluster over here and then we have hopefully our DR cluster. It might be in another data center, it might be in another kind of part of the building in the case that we are uh, in a university, for example. And probably you are doing today beam replicas between, between the both of them. I don't know. Um, hopefully you will, you will already be doing that. If you are doing that, um, and the main difference with CDP versus the normal replicas is that CDP, it does not do any snapshot at all. It just leverages the VMware IO filters. That means that directly talks with the VM kernel of the ESX size and it moves the data uh, thanks to the uh, CDP proxies, uh, the VM proxies just move them from one cluster to another cluster and that's important it needs to be a cluster so even if you have them on the second side and on that second side is really small and you just have one esxi that esxi needs to be part of a vsphere cluster so once again we just extract all the data from the vm kernel all the micro changes from cpu ram and then we just move them to the or to the other side. This can be done uh, with a minimum of every two seconds. Uh, so just imagine uh, how powerful this this is. In the case that you have an active active, I will probably still recommend it to you. Um, in the case that you have a, imagine an always on, uh, and you have already that on both data centers, why not have that CDP protection? Uh, just replicate in every five seconds, for example. So in the case that you lose both of them ransomware or something goes really really wrong with the operating system on both at least you can just do and recover from that uh, cdp cdp policy i'll probably recommend that to you without without any problem so um how what else around the around the the cdp itself uh cdp it works in vsphere 6.5 and above so if you have 6.5 6.7 7.0 that will work without without any problem uh, what else as well? If you have a uh, bull licensing or enterprise plus licensing already, this feature is for free and you will, you can just upgrade for version 10 or from version 9.5 into the latest version 11 and you will have this functionality. So once again, maybe you even have another product to do this uh, continuous data protection already. So now it's time to try and see if CDP will um, will help you with your uh, with your business case and try to save costs uh, thanks to this new technology. So the other big one, the other uh, the other feature that I absolutely enjoy and I and I like and personally I see this on the field every single day. Uh, so a lot of customers are requesting this functionality. And this is the one over here. It's the security on the backup repository. So the immutability. We call it a Linux hardened repository. It's kind of two in one. So the first part is that uh, now the Linux repositories, they are much more secure. We do not need any SSH anymore. We can just add them through uh, like a one-time password. So they are really, really secure already. And the second part, it's the immutability part. So the immutability part, you can just format the volumes as, a, uh, as an XFS, uh, as well as an NX does it work as well, and BRFS as well, and you can leverage the uh, immutability on those systems. Um, in the case that you need as well the block cloning uh, for the synthetic full backups happening over the weekend going really, really fast, then that only works in XFS. So remember, I think my preference will be XFS because you will have the uh, block cloning and you will have the immutability as well. 
Now for a news case around that, just think about that, right? So you have these two sites once again. Um, on the first side, you are doing already your backups every day, your, your dailies. Uh, over here, no problem at all. Maybe they are, a, they are Windows repository. So probably I will recommend it to you to change that into like a new Linux repository with XFS. And uh, on that uh, XFS, you enable the immutability through the Vim console. So that's the first copy protected and secure. Now for the backup copy on this site, I will probably recommend it to you as well to have Linux with XFS and then just enable the immutability. So you have already two copies. Those two copies are perfectly safe. Now for the third copy, it can be, uh, for example, to one of the uh, uh, AWS, uh, which it has the, the object log or any or, or the of the um, S3 compatible with object lock uh, enabled. Or it can be as well a service provider, which uh, which they can enable as well the insider protection. So remember, immutable first copy, second copy immutable as well, and third copy, even if it's object storage or if it's the service provider, that can be immutable as well. So every single um, path where the data, where your data, the backup touches, it's, uh, it's secure. That's really, really important. Maybe at the beginning, if you have this windows for the backup repository and you are doing REFS and you're happy with that, okay, but at least the backup copy, please enable uh, that Linux immutability. So you have kind of two different years. One is, one is Windows, it might be even on your production Active Directory, even if it's not best practices, but at least that second copy, it's somewhere uh, with Linux immutability just to have different, uh, different stuff. So that's quite huge. That is included in every single version of Beam, so that it, it's on standard, uh, enterprise, enterprise plus, community edition, and it works uh, out of the box. So that's 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 pretty neat. What is the third um, functionality that I uh, like to discuss today? It's around, now that we discuss around object storage, the archive tier. With the archive tier, you will be able to uh, reduce costs by moving, uh, it will be, will move, will take already all the backups that you have on the cloud because you might be using Vim for, for a few years already and you might be using as well the AWS S3 and Azure Blob to send some of your backups or to copy some of your backups. So now with the archive tier on the same scale out backup repository on version 11, you will have an option which is called archive tier. You enable that and then all those monthlies or all those yearlies that you have there in AWS S3 or in Azure, in, in Azure Blob, you will be able, Vim will tier them into, um, into a cheaper storage like Glacier or Azure Archive. So that is quite huge, if you ask me. Um, what is next as well? It's the improvements on instant recovery. I'm pretty sure that during these years using Vim, you have uh, used more than once the uh, instant Vim recovery. So recovering from uh, from uh, from a backup, just doing right click, instant VM recovery. In a few seconds, your VM is there, responding to ping and so on. That's great. So imagine that uh, power for, for example, for your critical SQL servers or for your critical Oracle databases. Um, imagine the production uh, SQL or Oracle goes down, but of course you have a lot of applications trying to reach the data directly, right click, uh, instant database restore and you will have that presented within seconds. So that's really, really, really powerful. And that's now in version 11 as well. What else? This is around the file server. Once again, file servers, you might have uh, hundreds or thousands of users connected to this file server, this critical NetApp filer or EMC, for example, or just some Windows servers. And if something of that goes down, now with version 11, you can just do right click, instant NAS restore, and all the users, they will see the, those shares again and they will be able to start doing all the operations, start opening files, saving files and so on and so forth. So that's, that's really, really powerful. Do, do, those improvement, those, those improvement, improvements on, um, on this instant, um, instant restore. What else is new? If you know me, uh, you know that I'm really passionate around API. So what's new? version 11 includes the uh, uh, VBR API. This API, the first is the first, uh, of course, is the first version of the API for VBR itself. And it's, it, it, it has just been built around the orchestration of the whole platform itself. So you can create, uh, create jobs from this API, export the jobs, 
um, policies, uh, repositories, proxies, all of that around the whole uh, infrastructure itself, around the, the whole platform. I think on future versions we will see more and more um, metrics and history around the jobs, but for now it is more around uh, orchestrate or automate or doing kind of like an infrastructure as a code thanks to the uh, the API. But anyways, uh, product development, it says on the, on the release notes that any feedback or any ideas, please send them back to them. So if you have any ideas, just go to the forums and say, this API is great, but uh, I will be, can we do this or can we do that? Can you add this for the next release and so on. Really powerful, super, super happy to see an API directly from, uh, for being backup and replication. You know that Enterprise Manager, it has a RESTful API for a long time. That's not, that's not going anywhere. So you will have all of that anyways, uh, in the case that you want to retrieve all those metrics and put them on some sort of uh, Grafana dashboard or something like that. That's still there and it will be for, um, for the future as well. So, and the latest one that I want to mention, I, there are so many, but I probably don't have enough whiteboard to draw all, all of them. So the last one is around the Beam Agent for Mac. Beam Agent for Mac, it's really important because I'm pretty sure that you have your creative de uh, department or you might have a, a lot of users or colleagues uh, on, your, on, your, uh, on your company already that they have Mac operating systems. Uh, the time capsules, I think they were in our life in 2018, more or less. I remember having one of them, uh, but yeah, that stopped working. And I know that some QNAP and some Synologies, they have some sort of um, protocols to emulate all of that. But it, anyways, that will be always kind of outside your normal backup strategy. So now with version 11, uh, this is good news. You can just protect these uh, agents, uh, this Mac, just as if they were any other agent. So this, uh, this just complements the Windows Beam, Beam agent for Microsoft and Beam agent for Linux, of course. So this really powerful. You can just install the agents, even automate the installation of the agents uh, on the different Macs and from there, just create the policies and protect what is most important for these uh, for these uh, professionals using uh, using uh, Macintosh operating system macOS, right? So a lot of new things. I encourage you to go and visit uh, the Beam.com and take uh, take a look at the what's new. See all the features. See what it can be important for you. A lot of new new things on the GUI itself on the console. Um, minor things like for example now you can just combine tags for example just use the and and or uh, tagging and the high priority jobs they are so much improvements for tape as well instant tape cloning there are so many new features uh, i've been reading the pdf a few times already but there are so many and this uh, that i draw here on the whiteboard to me they are the most important. So I had customers already asking me like, uh, uh, hello Jorge, so why should we go to version 11? I mean, we are already happy in 9.5, some of the customers, or even we are in version 10a with, with no problem at all. And we're super, super happy. And we are not going to start using CDP out of the box because we might not be ready in latency between the sites or they might not even have like a second site. Uh, they just have maybe on the second side just some backup repository, but not infrastructure, so they cannot replicate itself, neither do CDP, of course. So why uh, to those customers? And I always reply them the same. It's like, if I were you, I mean, if I was you, I will go to version 11, just because the security on the backups itself, uh, because some of the customers, once again, they have not moved just yet to object storage, so they are doing backups on-prem, and then maybe to a second site, and uh, sometimes to tape, just to keep that, uh, that, uh, that, that protection. So just moving to version 11, just enabling this, which is free, which is included in all versions, the Linux repository with XFS and immutability, uh, that will be probably the best, the, the best thing to do. Just have your backups protected on a really good way. If it's not on the backup repository again, because it might be traumatic to replace that, that Windows repository, at least have it on the backup copy on the second side. Same for the service providers, just start creating these repositories um, on Linux as well and offer that to, to customers. So version 11 to me, all of these features, but if you just need to select one and, and the why moving kind of immediately, 
uh, wide kind of risk into, into kind of moving into a ma major release, it will be around the uh, Linux, uh, Linux immutability uh, without, without any doubt. So I hope that the use cases make sense to you and I hope that I explain it to you in, 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 a, good, in a good way, in a good fashion. This is what I see on the field and this is uh, what, what customers tell me and how is, I explain it as well uh, to them with the use cases. They are real use cases, everything that I've been mentioning over here. And if you like it, yeah, well, yeah, subscribe over here. Uh, I will tend to create more English material from time to time. And it will be always, you know, with the brackets uh, uh, EN, yes, uh, English. So please just subscribe and thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. Bye.